Hey folks, we're here at King Street, South Carolina for the Cedar Swamp Lansing Tournament. That's right, Blair. We will be interviewing Ruthie Brown. She's the secretary of the Cedar Swamp Masters and also Al Brown, which is the president. We'll also be talking to Al Brown's daughter and some other girls who are competing in the junior division. Very good. Stay tuned for some very good Lansing. Joining me now is Ruthie Brown, the secretary of the Cedar Swamp Lancers. Now imagine finding a brown down here in King Street. But Ruthie, you just told me that it's been 30 years since you competed. Are yes. you going to come out of retirement for me today? Not today. Not today. Not today. Well, tell us a little bit about the Cedar Swamp Lancers. Well, it's a group of people who compete in uh, with poles and lances and try to get rings off of poles. It's not the medieval times where you knock people off the horses. Right, the jousting. The right? jousting, right, yes. right, right. And so how long has the Cedar Swamp Lancers been around? As long as I've been around, but that, even longer than that, it started, um, it brought, came across the Atlantic with our forefathers who founded this country. And it was used, lancing was used as a practice for the jousting. Mm -hmm. And when it came across the Atlantic, we never knocked each other off the horses. But right. it was interrupted during World War One and World War II. Okay. Um, and then different little groups would, would start again and it's just cropped up and it stayed in Williamsburg County stayed alive in Williamsburg County because of these the Cedar Swamp Lancers. Right. And so Cedar Swamp Lancers have been in continuation for how long now? Have y'all missed any years? Well, World War One and World War okay. Two. Yeah. And I think I was on the internet last night and we was looking at some great old pictures and I saw Ruthie Brown looking <laughs> looking pretty good. On a horse. Oh I think you were on a horse. We were mm -hmm. trying to copy it off, we couldn't get it taken. Well tell us a little bit about uh the riders and the equipment, just a little bit what we're going to see here today. All right, each lancer furnishes his horse and his lance um, and his lady, and he, um, he has to bring all of this himself. You make the costumes, you make the lance, and you compete. We don't compete for money. We've never competed for money. It's always for prizes. Right. Um, there's a there's a track that you run, you have to run it in 60 seconds, a 75 yard track. There are three rings hanging from poles, suspended from a gallows like pole, and the goal is to get all three rings on your lance. Your, the senior division has to have their lance eight feet long. It has to be five feet from your hand to the, to the point where you get the ring, and three feet behind to balance. Okay, and a little quick thought, because I was hoping y'all going to let me do it today. Well, you can do it. Yeah. But uh, it's kind of like uh, these lances or poles, they're handed down from generation to generation. You don't, you can borrow somebody's wife, but not their pole, that's right? That's right, that's right. <laughs> the, there was a gentleman in, that lived in Cedar Swamp whose name was McCray, Mr. Jim McCray, and he made all the lances by hand. Um, Mr. Jim McCray is no longer with us, so it's, you better keep your lance because there are no more in production. Now, several people have made them, tried to make them, but it's it's very definitely a skill. Right, okay. You know, difficult to get a lance. And like I said, we, me and you met several months ago and was and decided we some horse tails and was coming down here and cover, cover this. And y'all want to grow Cedar Swamp lances, is that, that That's correct? That's correct. Okay, so how can people get in touch with you to, to do that? You can go to the website, lancing.com. Okay. And um, Buddy McCutcheon. Okay or I will answer any emails or questions that people have. So basically you, you want to grow that this is a, an annual event, correct? That's correct. This, we, this is actually our second tournament this year. We okay. have a, an annual event in the fall mm -hmm. and um, the Come See Me weekend is in the spring now. Okay. Well folks, hang on. We're going to get into some great lancing here in a few minutes.
Join me now is Al Brown, another Brown. Uh, this, the president of the Cedar Swamp Lancer. Yep. He's going to give us some logistics of what it takes to be a champion Lancer. And I was hearing behind the scene that you won this thing a few times. <laughs> yep. So Al, to start with, got to have a good horse. So gotta tell us a little bit horse. about this good looking thing here. Oh, this is Cruz. He's just a five-year-old and he's just starting out. He really isn't running yet. Uh, it takes about two years to get one to really do it right. And uh, my father had a Marsh Tacky to got from Beaufort, South Carolina. And he was one of the top riders on her. And uh, my horse, Ranger, is my older horse. He's about 12. And uh, he's good. Who will you be competing on today? Ranger. Ranger. Yeah. So you won't be cruising on cruise, I'm, right? I'm now. practicing cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got you. And so, so how about some of the tack for Lansing? Is, uh, well, any mo most of the riders ride, ride western, but I like to ride English because you got more feel of the horse and you got to get out of the saddle. You don't want any part of the horse touching you except your feet and your legs. Right. When he's running. And, uh, and we got a 75 yard course. It's got to be through in six seconds. That's the time limit. And uh, any kind of horse will do it. You just got to have one that'll run and stay steady the whole way. And, uh, and pretty good speed at six seconds, but it's nothing outrageous. And the poles are how far apart again? 25 yards apart. Okay. And we got a 25 yard starting point where the time clock starts. And That's what I like, a, a timed event. Yep, it's a timed event. Now, All right. I'm saying these things are heirlooms, right? What yep. we got? <laughs> this, lan this lance is probably over 100 years old, blown to my father. And uh, the one he rode with, and most of them has been broke on the end from falling off the horse or something that happened. And uh, it's five feet from the end of the lance to the point. But the whole lance is about seven feet, eight feet long. And it's made out of a heart pine tree, heart pine, long leaf pine tree. And uh, they chewed it down with a draw knife is the way they did it. And I mean, it's handmade. And show us the position you, you have when you're well, lancing. This lance is made where it balances right there. See that? It's balanced. So when you're going along there, you're just floating along and that lance is just sitting right there. And, and then we got an inch and a half ring and we go down the wedding band size if you get practice, you know if you run off enough and tie wedding band size now my father ran off and got 33 rings straight and they got down to the wedding band size and the other rider got 32 rings well that's the longest runoff we had in, in the history of it that we know about so you said you got to cover it in how many seconds you said second. so you so Equate that to miles per hour. That's probably about 15, 20 miles an hour? Uh, probably at least 20, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the horse has got to be wide open. And you're not going to get any rings if he's not. I mean, you can loaf along there and you're rough. If he's running wide open, that's just, that's the trick. Because you're posting up in the stirrups when you're that's doing right. that, right? That's right. Well, this old cowboy couldn't do it because my eyesight's getting bad. <laughs> oh, you can do it. <laughs> and that's how far from, uh, so how tall is, is I think the post is nine feet. Okay. And the hangers go from number one to number 10. So you can elevate to how high your horse is and how tall you are. So it's, you know, it fluctuates. But, you know, it, it got to be right-handed. Left-handed rider catches the devil because everything's right. I mean, you can't run from the opposite way. So you got to be right to do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you could be competing in the senior division, right? Senior division. And my That's... daughter's going to be competing in the junior division. Now, will they, will they be a, uh, a ring off? <laughs> yeah, if they tie. What, what we do is run the handicap system. If we go through here and get nine rings. All right, if another rider gets nine rings, they'll go to the smaller rings and they'll run off to see who misses and the winner gets the most rings. And that's the way it is, a handicap system. And the, and, the, and the other top rider might be tied with you, but if he loses, he doesn't get anything. That's the way it works. Well, we certainly enjoyed this. Folks, I told you I was going to bring you a, a ringer. <laughs> so we're looking forward to the match. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs>
I'm here now with Rebecca Brown, who is also competing in today's tournament in the junior division. And Rebecca, you have your important prop right here, your Lance. Tell me about it. Um, it's shorter than my daddy's. Um, he actually made it as a pull stick, and he made the end of it to a point, as you see. And it's pink, of course. <laughs> so nobody will take it, yep. as you said. So do a lot of girls typically have shorter lances so they can manage them better? Um, yeah, because the long ones are awkward for me because right. it's, it's, it's just easier to manage a shorter lance for me. Philip um, actually is my age. He's, um, his lance is about the same size as mine. His is blue on the bottom. Okay. And what horse are you competing on today? Um, this is Ranger. My dad uses him too. He's, he's about 12 and... Um, He's been doing it for a while, so he knows what he's doing. Helps me out a lot. And um, so I'll be riding him today. And how long have you been doing lancing? For about four years now. Okay. And I've done it about twice a year. And so your dad, he competes in the senior division. He's been doing it for a while? Since he was 15 years old, actually. Okay. <laughs> and so that's how you got involved in it? Yeah, um, he's really helped me a lot, so. So Rebecca, what kind of saddle do you use to ride? Um, this is an English saddle. It's not a Western saddle. It doesn't have the horn and it's um, a lot lighter. I can manage it myself. It's not big and bulky. And a lot of people don't like this because they feel like, oh, uh, can't hold on to anything. Well, right. it's actually easier for me because you just, it's easier to hold on with your legs actually. Mm -hmm. So I use this kind of saddle. When I ride, I have to have a horn to grab yeah. onto. <laughs> That's what I thought too and I hate it. But now that I've started, I don't want to go back. And so you just approach the saddle the same way you would mm -hmm. you know, anything else. And what other equipment do you use besides the saddle and then your lance? Is that it? That's pretty much it. And then hope, hope your horse goes really fast? <laughs> yeah, you, you have to, um, when you get them going, you have to stand on your feet out of the saddle because if you don't, you'll be bouncy, mm -hmm. which makes your lance wobble, which causes you to miss the ring. So you have to be on your feet on balance with the horse. You have to go the same time he goes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Hi, I'm Jessica Brown here in Kings Street, South Carolina at the Lansing Tournament. Stay tuned for more horse tales. Folks, we're at the Lansing Tournament today and these horses are running 20 mile an hour trying to get those rings and that brings us to the vet tip of the day. Hey there, my name is Adam Eichelberger and I'm a veterinarian with the South Carolina State Veterinarian's Office in Clemson University. Today I just want to give you another horse health tip. So I'm here with Tebow. Tebow's a little bit sedate, uh, just for purposes of demonstration, so he's not going to be moving too much. But uh, one thing that, that, as every horse owner, you want to know how to wrap a leg just in case you have an emergency, or even just in case uh, you, you know, you're shipping a horse and it needs to have its leg wrapped whenever they're shipped. Um, several things that are important to remember about the lower limb are there's some big tendons down here. So when you're actually looking at this horse's leg, this is the, the main bone here in the front. This bone is the same bone that goes down to your middle finger, this one right here. And this is essentially the hoof, your fingernail, and then the, then the fetlock, and then the actual knuckle is um, the ankle here. And this big bone has a couple of residual bones here that, are, that you're actually going to be wrapping or encompassing in your wrap. These structures back here are all tendons. Tendons can suffer from improper wrapping. So every time that you prepare a wrap or you wrap a horse's leg, you always want to make sure you have plenty of padding, wrap it evenly, and, and just do it very carefully. And if you don't know how, have someone show you the first time. So, and also, you want to make sure that you keep an even wrap and you don't just wrap up high in the leg because typically they'll slip down. So I'm just going to slow, show you today a lower limb wrap. And so the first thing I'm going to actually put on is a nice big cotton. This is typically what I would recommend you have in an emergency kit. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to actually, excuse me, I'm going to wrap it from the outside to the inside, trying to keep it nice and even, plenty of padding, plenty of protection, and all nice and even. These are just cotton wraps you can get from any kind of vet supply store. Secondly, I'm just going to take another nice little cotton gauze. Again, uh, one of the things I tell you on the track, you know, a lot of racehorse people is always wrap a horse's tendons to the inside. I think more importantly, you always want to make sure you're wrapping it evenly and with the same kind of compression, never pulling it too tight. Because if you pull it too tight, you can actually have pressure points and you can actually do damage to the tendons. So a nice, consistent wrap up and down the leg and all the way back up. And finally, I'm going to take my roll of a vet wrap. This is a, uh, a nice, safe um, product that we commonly use here when we're wrapping 
damaged legs and actually I'm going to start at the top and again go down and at first I'll do one complete roll then with each roll I'm going to go about 50% down trying to avoid uh, you know folds in it and just keep it on going down with even pressure once I get to the bottom I just try to be safe and, and apply even pressure and then again going back up overlapping by about 50% with each of my reps. Therefore, not only are you protecting the leg, you're not doing any damage to the leg either. Once I get back up to the top, I'll actually tear my bandage and the leg is nice and protected and you have a really nice and pretty wrapped leg. So again, the things you need for safety, kind of a first aid wrap would be cotton, a support, and typically something like a vet wrap or elastic type bandage. So if you have any questions just about general kind of first aid and lower limbs or doing a leg wrap, don't hesitate to contact me. My name is Adam Eichelberger, or you can contact your local veterinarian. They'll be glad to provide you any kind of tips on, on typical things you would need to do to protect your horse's leg in case you're shipping or in case you have some kind of injury, initial treatments, and continued therapies. Yeah. Folks have been nice enough to let the old PD cowboy give it a try. I don't, I, I have to admit. I done tried it a few times. I did get one. So let's see what happens this time. This is the real deal. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. One out of three ain't bad. I'm here with Webb Carroll, who runs a training center in St. Matthews, and Mr. Carroll, I hear you have a horse tail for me. Oh yeah, we, uh, we've been around for about 30 years. My father did it before me, and we break and train horses commercially. Mm -hmm. And uh, I broke uh, 19, in 2002, we had the horse War Emblem that won the Derby and the Preakness. Oh, so wow. what are the chances of that? Yeah. And so then later on this year, uh, we had the horse Shackleford that ran fourth in the Derby, and he won the Preakness and he ran fifth in the Belmont so you know when you have a hands-on operation and you deal with those kind of horses and you have them it mm -hmm. really is exciting so to go to the Preakness and watch this horse run and win the Preakness it was just something unreal that's amazing we should send our marsh tackies to you <laughs> <laughs> but anyway that's what we did and he was uh, he had a little bit of a gait problem a little claustrophobic and we worked with him long and hard to get him to settle and uh, he was a little unruly just before he got in the gate so we had our fingers crossed mm -hmm. but he came out and did well. Well that is great. Thank you so much for right. sharing that with us. Good girl. Dad we've had such an exciting day here in King Street, South Carolina at the Cedar Slot Lansing Tournament. It's been quite an experience. I've never seen anything like it. The beautiful costumes, just all the pageantry. It was great. And from my perspective the horsemanship. I mean it was when I come out here and I I heard the horses thundering, and I'll turn and look, and I said, "Wow!" So they are covering uh, six seventy-five yards in six seconds. So they are really moving. And then they're talking about the size of the ring. I said, "Wow!" I said, "And they want me to try that?" <laughs> <laughs> and you did. You did good. And they're trying to bring Lansing back. They've been doing this for years and years, and we were just honored to be a part of it today. And I want to, with that being said, thank Ruthie Brown. She invited me down months ago, and told us what she had going on and wanted to invite horse tails to come out and do a show. So we did. And we give y'all the information when we interview Ruthie, we want y'all to come get involved. So you will be seeing more about Lansing in this area soon. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank Rebecca and Al Brown, the father and daughter team. They both competed and they both won. So that was great time to watch. And also I want to thank Senator Yancey McGill. Uh, he really works hard for this district. He really does has got a lot of good things done for this area and stuff like that and a special thanks to him and guys if you have any ideas for any upcoming shows that you think we should might do please visit our website at horsetailstv.com and also like us on facebook and we are now on twitter at horsetails tv and nothing about the hands and reins this week but in the words of mr ray boatwright which is a legend in this area in horsemanship is that when you go down to the end keep your lance up and when you're running keep your lance straight until next week, folks. See you next week.